on the block. The first full quarter as a merged entity uh, is what we're seeing as far as IDFC first goes. The numbers aren't entirely comparable. That's the first thing you need to keep in mind. But a fairly weak quarter is what we what it does look like. In fact, let's bring in then the management of the company to really get an idea of what factored in here. We've had Dinathan joining in right here on the channel. Welcome to the show, sir. And uh, let me just start by, uh, you know, some of the key numbers. It's a net loss of about 218 crores. And I can understand that this is largely on account of provisioning. Uh, of course, the comparable figure as far as the bottom line goes is a 42 crore profit that we've seen in the same quarter last year, but not strictly, uh, not strictly uh, comparable. The provisions of 419 crores that you've made has been on account of about 2,800 crore odd of exposure that you have to specifically a few uh, companies in the financial services space. What can you tell us about this? Because this seems to be largely what's impacted your provisioning and then in turn your bottom line. Uh, let me just say that this uh, loss of 218 crores of uh, after tax actually translates to uh, loss of uh, uh, 417 crores pre-tax. Uh, and as you can see, uh, provisions taken for three identified accounts, which we'll talk about later, uh, is about uh, 420 crores. So if you net it off, the core uh, quarter is actually not a loss. It's actually marginally profitable, let me say. Uh, I must also just put one number on the table just so that I can uh, put put the basics out of the way, uh, as uh, for the full financial year, uh, the reported loss is uh, 1,944 crores, uh, but this is uh, after adjusting for the fact that we had a goodwill accounting of 2,599 crores and a tax, uh, one-time tax credit of uh, 1,351 crores. Let me say the core uh, profit loss before tax, uh, let me say, for uh, this uh, financial year is uh, 696 crores. Now, to your uh, specific uh, question uh, as to what this was, uh, this uh, 2,800 crores were a set of uh, accounts which we identified, um, uh, which we, uh, two of which were performing on time and were just downgraded by the marketplace, uh, by the rating agencies, and one of them which was behind schedule, uh, which we thought we, w we could take a conservative view and provide 15% of the principal, totaling up to 420 crores. All right, so I can understand then that all three of these accounts are from the financial services space. They're not island FS, that's the disclosure that you've made. And also they have been recently downgraded as well from various uh, credit rating agencies. What then is the visibility for these accounts going forward? Or can we expect that at least in the next quarter these will also be slipping? Uh, no, we do not expect them to slip, uh, certainly not the next quarter. Uh, as, as I said, uh, these have been done more on a prudent basis. Uh, the financial services accounts of these, uh, totaling up to 1,800 crores, have actually been servicing their interest on time, and they're absolutely standard on the books. So you can treat it that 15% is only uh, conservatively taken. We are not expecting it to uh, get disturbed in the coming quarter. Point taken. Just a word on, uh, you know, these accounts that have been in the news, names like Jet Airways, Island FS. Uh, uh, your disclosure says that, you know, you have no exposure at this point in time to these accounts. And uh, that's fairly surprising. Uh, did you have exposure in the past? Has that been sold down or written off? Uh, and also, what can you tell us then about the legacy bad loans or legacy large accounts uh, that were on the books of the erstwhile uh, IDFC Limited? Uh, first of all, uh, to these names that you talked about, there were no loans in the past either, so they have not been written off or anything like that, they just didn't exist. Uh, with regard to your question about uh, uh, legacy uh, infrastructure loans uh, of uh, IDFC Bank, uh, what we had to disclose, we have disclosed uh, today. So basically these three accounts uh, do belong to the erstwhile uh, IDFC uh, uh, Bank book as uh, correctly pointed out to you, by you. And uh, this, is, this is all there is to disclose. There is no more. We don't see any other problem apart from the three that we disclosed. All right, point taken. Uh, both your, uh, you know, gross and net NPAs have uh, actually increased. If you look at it sequentially, of course, on a year-on-year -year basis, it looks much improved. So well, it's coming at 2.43% as far as gross NPA goes, 1.27% as far as net NPA goes in the fourth quarter. The comparable figures were about nearly 2% and under 1% as far as net NPA is concerned in the December quarter. Uh, what is this on account of? Uh, I understand a large part of it is on uh, because of the change in reporting norms, but net of that, uh, where really have you seen the pressure? All right, I think a little trouble there connecting with uh, Mr. Vedyanathan. We'll try and get him back on the line. But uh, essentially, it's interesting to see how the asset quality has moved in the quarter gone by uh, because we have seen an, uh, an increase coming in as far as gross NPAs go and net NPAs. 
Uh, in fact, Mr. Vedinathan, if we have you back on the line, my question is on the asset quality. We've seen an uptick coming in both on the gross and net NPA front, and some of this is because of the change in reporting norms. Uh, you know, give us a sense of net of the kind of change that we've seen in the reporting norms. What has factored into the increase in uh, bad loans? Uh, I don't know at what stage the line snapped, so I, 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 I'm not sure I'll, uh, when I lost you. So, but uh, let me just say that uh, to your specific question, whether uh, these three accounts were uh, belonging to the erstwhile IDFC uh, bank, the answer is yes. Uh, and uh, uh, have we taken a provision, we have taken a provision of 15%, yes. Uh, do we expect any of these accounts to immediately default in the next quarter or, or, uh, or two quarters from now? The answer is no. Uh, uh, but have they been taken more on a conservative basis? The answer is yes. Uh, do we have any more accounts uh, lined up on this uh, process where we think we're going to disclose in the next quarter or anything like that? The answer is no. We think this is broadly what disclosure we had to do. All right. And on the asset quality front, uh, we've seen uh, you know an increase coming in, in the, on a sequential basis. What else has factored into this? Any uh, you know, areas of concern that you're spotting as far as stress slippages go? Uh, as I said, there is... Uh, Apart from what we, dis we have disclosed as part of this process, uh, there is uh, no uh, stress account. The retail loan book uh, is performing fantastically well. Uh, the other corporate loans other than what we have disclosed are all performing fantastically well. So we are not expecting uh, any, any deterioration on asset quality from here on. We are expecting business as usual. The important thing for us to actually is to uh, structurally uh, build the uh, liability base uh, which is what the future of a bank is all going to be about. All right, just a final question, sir. You know, where we've seen the improvement is very clearly on net interest margins. It's looking good. It's above the 3% mark. Uh, we're also seeing in terms of assets, the exposure to large corporates has come down very substantially. In fact, it's essentially halved if we look at it on a sequential basis. And at the same time, your retail assets have grown. We've discussed it, uh, this in the past. It's a part of your strategy. Give us a sense of where you'd like to see the number move because retail funded assets are now about 37% of your book, if I'm not mistaken. Where will we see this move? And then what does that do to you know your your spreads your yields what is the outlook really going forward in terms of target see last year in march the retail uh, loan book of the standalone bank so to say was between say, 6 to 7000 crores and uh, it is uh, already touched 37000 crores i think it's a huge jump in terms of the NIMS, last year same time we were at 1.7% we are now 3% i think it's a huge jump in terms of spreads, the rate at which you lend and the rate at which you borrow, just spreads, not NIMS, spreads, uh, that itself has moved uh, uh, quite substantially upwards of 3.5%. Uh, number four, uh, the, um, uh, the CASA has grown 60% year on year from 5,700 crores uh, to uh, 9,100 crores. Uh, number five, the CASA plus retail term deposits, we treat both of these as uh, synonymously retail because end of the day it's, 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 uh, it's diversified money. Uh, that number has uh, increased in the last uh, by, by 7,500 crores from 5,700 crores to 13,200 crores in the last one year alone. I think these are very strong set of numbers on the liability side. Uh, the asset side like, as, like you pointed out is uh, the retail is growing quite well. We expect that to comfortably grow 25% this year. So both on the asset side and liability side, you will definitely see strong improvements in the next four quarters. All right, Mr. Vedinathan, we leave it at that. A pleasure speaking to you as always. It is looking like, uh, you know, we are seeing a bit of pain, a bit of a slowdown that's playing in across the system. But at the same time, like, uh, you know, Mr. Vedinathan was pointing out, the asset side is looking fairly strong. We have seen margins improve also. And considering the trajectory that the bank has laid out in terms of targets going forward, we can only expect that number to move higher. Well, at the same time, let's put the focus then.